Do, 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 do. Hey, greetings. Welcome to another whiteboard session on a rainy Sunday. At least it is here. I notice uh, I keep seeing these uh, really unintelligent comments. The unintelligent comments go something like this. <clears throat> well, I should be able to use any good SD card in my new camera. You know, it worked on my old camera. That's so it should work. <laughs> um, excuse me. Let's dissect this unintelligence and discuss a couple things about SD cards. And by the way, a card rating is uh, always, whether it be some SanDisk or anybody else, is uh, maximum speed, and what they're telling you is the read speed, not the write speed. But let's talk about buffer versus bottleneck, and also what has changed recently. Now, I don't know what you know about, like, say, a lossless... Um, compressed raw file, like from a GFX for example, it averages about uh, 52 megabytes, you know, lossless compressed, compressed, 14-bit um, raw file. The same thing actually, oddly enough, from the 45 megapixel Nikon D850, it's the same thing. They're huge raw files. Now GFX is okay to use any old super slow 95 uh, megabit uh, per second uh, card, an old slow card. These are really, really cheap, by the way. So why would a camera like that use a really slow old card, be just fine with it, and yet the Nikon D850, you, uh, should, you use XQD cards, of course, and uh, you should be using really fast SD cards, like these 300 megabit per second. There's really no difference between the older ones that got discontinued, that 300s replaced the 280 megabit per second cards. Like on uh, the older 280s, which are only like a year old, the uh, write speed and the read speed, 257 megabit per second read speed, but 200 megabit per second write speed. Let's talk about buffer versus uh, bottleneck, okay? Here we go. Buffer. People say, well, we will talk about a buffer. Yeah, well, I mean, both of these cameras have the same size RAW file, the GFX and the D850. Yeah, the difference is, is that no one's ripping them off fast on the GFX. And uh, at three frames per second, you're not too interested in buffer. Well, what is buffer? Buffer is like a space in your trunk. There you go. Trunk space before everything gets dumped out, kind of like how much groceries you can stick in the trunk before you got to head back to the house and then offload it. Because once it's off the camera, then of course the buffer or your trunk can keep filling. Bottleneck. Here's the issue. Here's the issue. Like, well, I'm going to use the same old cards, and I've encountered this like a hundred times from people. It's like, I'm going to take the same old cards I was using in my Fujifilm X-T1 and drop them over in my X-T2 and my X-T3 Fujifilm. Yeah, you know the difference other than a uh, uh, significantly larger buffer on the X-T2 and the X-T3? We're talking about trunk space. We do have more trunk space, okay? Both are really bottlenecks, okay? We need to think about bottleneck in two ways. We talk about buffer versus bottleneck on SD cards or your entire camera system. Your camera system, once you stick an SD card or a, a compact flash card or an XQD card into your camera, you're talking then about the camera system, right? Because the two have become cybernetically conjoined, right? When you're taking photographs, you're talking about the card and the camera. So you got two bottlenecks. You got the buffer bottleneck, which is your trunk space before you got to offload it. And then you got the bottleneck on the cards. You see, it's not an issue with the enormous, and I have this camera, of course, the enormous files from the medium format GFX because you don't need fast cards of the GFX. What you have here on these 95 megabit per second cards, which are really, really cheap, is you have this bottleneck right here. Now, everybody knows that like the Nikon D500, okay, which uses XQD cards and SD cards, same as the Nikon D850. Okay, we have this enormous mouth or portal. There's a sexual joke in here somewhere, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, we're not going to go there. We don't have an issue with a bottleneck on the media cards because XQD cards, of course, blast the hell and gone out of any SD card. I think everybody pretty much understands that. But if you're thinking about sticking these cards, which you're using in your Fujifilm G, uh, excuse me, X-T1, and then using those same cards in your X-T2 and X-T3, 
you've uh, got no issues with the the trunk buffer, which is also a bottleneck. But you say, I got a bottleneck. I got this little hot rod roadster with a tiny trunk in it. I got a bottleneck and I only get so much groceries before I got to head back home and offload the car. Yeah, you're not going to change that. No one's going to change that on the camera. But you start sticking those slow cards in your X-T2 and X-T3, and then you stick them in continuous high, and then your X-T2 and X-T3 are trying to offload from the trunk or their buffer into a media slot, media card, media medium, sounds redundant, bottleneck. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, I got a lockup. It's like, what were you doing? Well, I was using these old slow cards, and I was shooting a continuous high, you know, as the horse was racing towards me, and yeah, for some reason I had this issue. He's like, yeah, yeah, you encountered this on those slow-ass cheap cards. It's like, and people also, too, forget the Lexar cards were really bad about this. They were rated. People said, well, it's a 200 megabit per second. Guys, that's the, that's the uh, read speed. That's not the write speed. Yeah, read versus write. So let's actually stick the appropriate camera with the appropriate card. Now, these cards over here are slightly expensive. Interestingly enough, and this is the insanity of it all, if you bought these cameras, which, you know, they're relatively cheap, but they're expensive cameras. And then you bought these cheap-ass cards. It's kind of like someone stupidly buying a Lamborghini and then buying some, like, uh, cheap old, I don't know. What's the cheapest sort of crap tire you could get at Walmart? Oh, I just got a Lamborghini. I'm going to throw some cheap crap on there. Yeah, you might have some cornering issues. So, X-T2, X-T3, A7 III, Nikon D850. You need this bottleneck right here. These are 300 megabit per second cards. I think the uh, the SanDisk. Never buy anything other than SanDisk SD cards. By the way, Sony does not make SD cards. Fujifilm has a, a label on SD cards. Fujifilm does not make media cards either. There's quite a few people that actually stick their name on uh, SD cards. Even Nikon has gotten their name now on an XQD card, but Nikon is not in the media business. I think the Nikon... XQD cards are made by Delkin. We don't really know yet, but Nikon is not making media cards. They're not. So, you need to recognize the fact. Also, for Nikon D500, you can actually get away, since you're talking about the secondary card slot, because, the reason why, is the trunk space on a Nikon D500 is actually huge. Nikon D500 has huge trunk space. Nikon D500 is like rolling around with a pickup truck. You can buy like a trunk load of groceries before they have to offload. So there's no bottleneck issues that anybody, including myself, has encountered. But this is not the primary card slot on a Nikon D500. This is XQD card right here. So Nikon has juggled those buffer issues on the Nikon D500 perfectly. So you don't need those. And the really huge files from the GFX don't need... These expensive cards, no way, no hell. Okay, because you have no buffer issues at three frames per second, which really nobody's shooting on the GFX, but if they do, they still don't have an issue. You neither have buffer issues, nor do you have bottleneck issues. Both buffer and bottleneck are a type of bottleneck. One's in the camera, and one is on the SD card, because if you notice on the back of the SD cards, on the cheaper SD cards, like the 95 megabit per second, you have a single set of pin slots, and this is not accurate, not the size anyway. And on these UHS-2 card slots, you have a second set of contact pins. This is not the scale, obviously so. If you look on the back of your card, you'll see that. Yeah, you know what that second set of pins is for? That's to eliminate out uh, this issue right here, bottleneck, because it's this versus this. This would be like representative of a glass of water, right? This is representative of like a, yeah, I, I think you understand that. It's like, how fast can you jam X amount of liquid into this bottle as opposed to this drinking glass? They're both 32 gig, in this case it would be 32 ounces, right? It's easier to dump it in really fast here than it is here. Do you see the representation here? I say if I had 32 ounces with a really wide mouth glass, you just dump it in all at once, wham! Fill it up instantly. Here, you got to trickle it in, right? Perfect analogy.
I think everybody understands a bottleneck analogy. If you don't understand a bottleneck analogy, then you probably didn't graduate from elementary school. Okay, there is explaining SD cards. Buffer versus bottleneck. Okay, because buffer is like a trunk. Yeah, but both are type of bottleneck. So thank you so much for watching. I hope I explained SD cards better because nobody's really made a video about this particular fact. And I think this simplifies it and everybody loves simpler. Straightforward. Like, oh my god, I get it now. This is really straightforward. This is the reason why a camera with huge files does not need super fast cards. Okay. And this is also the reason why you can't be using the slow-ass cards from your X-T1 in your X-T2 and X-T3, which also crank out more frames per second, but also much larger files. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good day.